Hey, welcome back to Chasing the Sun. I'm Eric and welcome back to my Vietnam travel series. My next few videos will have a focus on motorcycling in Vietnam. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel, especially if you're a rider. I'm going to give you all the tips, show you where all the roads are if you are thinking of riding in Vietnam and that you really should. So this video, I'm going to share with you how to ride in Vietnam. There's various different rules, if there's any at all. It's completely different than riding in North America. So before you get on a motorcycle or scooter here, you should really know the ins and outs and this video will help you with just that. Okay, in this video, I want to share with you some tips for riding around in Vietnam, especially if you're thinking of coming here, checking out the place and uh, renting a scooter or a motorcycle. Here's 10 tips that will make it really useful for you when you're traveling in Vietnam on a scooter. So although this video is talking about the rules and the tips of motorcycling, I want to preface by saying that there really is no rules in Vietnam. If you've ever seen people ride here, you'll see that it just looks chaotic. So having said that, let's dive into 10 tips that will really help you when you're here. Okay, so number one, scooters should be staying on the right lane. They leave the left lane for passing. So right lane, sometimes you see a middle lane, scooters can take that, but usually slower traffic on the right, so scooters stay on the right. Now, sometimes I have seen scooters take the left lane to pass, but then quickly get back into the middle or the right-hand side. Also, what's interesting is scooters actually don't need to pay tolls. I did the high van pass and they had their own lane dedicated, so that's a really nice bonus. I've noticed here that it's not really a problem to ride the shoulder, so if you need to and it's congested, scooters will go anywhere, even cars. So I don't think it's a big deal to be riding the scooters, not like North America. Sometimes on the right lane, you'll see a box marked with an X. That is meant to be kept clear. So don't stay in there at a red light or anything like that. That's meant to be kept clear for people to take that box to turn right. So don't congest the traffic by staying in that box. Two, it is mandatory to wear helmets in Vietnam. I know that in US there's some states that don't need helmets. In Vietnam, that's not the case. You have to wear helmets. And my tip here is that I would pick a better grade helmet because I have seen locals wear bicycle grade helmets. That's not the smartest thing to do. Being a rider myself for over 25 years, I would pick a proper helmet. There's no such thing as DOT or Snell rating in Vietnam, but if you're a rider, you can tell. Get something that's a little bit nicer. Now, I guess if you're just riding around the city, you're probably okay with an open face. If you're going longer distance, something with a visor to protect the front of your face in case there's a fall probably would be better. Three, avoid drinking or driving. Although that's common sense, it is also prohibited here. It's quite strict. Sometimes even one beer is not good. So avoid it, especially if you're on a scooter with a lot of traffic in the town. So don't do that. Four bigger or stronger vehicles have a right of way so it's not like north america where like for instance a pedestrian has a right of way sometimes and cars would give way to it that's not the case here so bigger vehicles trucks stronger vehicles that kind of stuff will have the first right of way so you if you're a scooter or a motorcycle you do not have a right of way over a car five the speed limits here are 40 for local roads and 60 for highways. So yes, it is very slow, not like North America. Uh, I have seen people go a little bit faster and it seems to be okay. When I was doing the Da Nang to Hue trip, uh, going over the High Van Pass and stuff, I was going about 60 to 70 and it seemed to be okay. Uh, some local traffics were going that, but the, by the rule, it's 40 to 60. Now, if you do get stopped by a police, as long as you're not excessive or anything like that, they're pretty chill. They're really just looking for money. So if you have like a 100,000 or 200,000 Vietnam Dong note, then just slip it to them and they would probably leave you alone. If they don't, then what you could do is just stall. Speak English, uh, pretend you don't know, stall a little bit, and most of the time, they're gonna go for an easier prey if they're just looking for money. So they'll kind of pass on you if you stall it enough, pretend you don't know. Six, not all traffic obey lights. So you gotta get used to that. It may seem chaotic when you're looking from far, but in actuality, when you're in the traffic, it's actually like a symphony. Uh, they know how to avoid you and merge around you, so that's not a problem. Uh, it just looks scary, but I would say go for it. Don't hesitate. That's probably the biggest tip here is don't hesitate. Just go for it, flow with the traffic. And when you're in the current of the traffic, everything seems to just go fine. 
Now related to this, I'll give you another tip and that's no sudden movement. So when you study the traffic in Vietnam, you'll see that people just naturally avoid around you. They'll go around you if they have to. There's not much road rage, it's great. But that also means that you don't surprise them. So no sudden movements, no, no sudden left or right turns, because that's gonna throw them off. If you make any of your moves more slowly, that gives them time to avoid you and go around you. Okay, seven, be 100% alert, because there's a lot of stuff happening in the streets of Vietnam. You've got cars buzzing by, uh, motorcycles, scooters, all not obeying traffic lights or traffic lanes, they'll go around you. Yeah, you've got things like vehicles coming the wrong direction and it all just seems normal. You've got vehicles coming out from T intersections swerving around. You've got scooters that's carrying tons of stuff, like long things that far extend the size of a scooter, so pay attention to those. Pedestrians that's going everywhere. There's a lot of stuff happening, especially if you're in cities like Ho Chi Minh or Hanoi, so be 100% alert. Okay, tip number eight is that although they say that you need an international driver's license, I've noticed that you don't really need it. No one really checks. I even rented scooters and the shop themselves don't check. So it's up to you. You can play by the book and have an international license just in case. I did that twice. But just as a tip, if you're out of time and you don't want to bother with it, it seems to be okay. So tip number nine is around what to pack. Now if you're going in the rainy seasons, I would say bring a light poncho. You could buy one there if you want, but if you've got it and you haven't left yet, bring one. Uh, it does rain. The good thing is it doesn't rain for long, it's just like spurts of it. So you just need your poncho for a little bit and then you can pack it away. Okay, so we are riding here in the rainy seasons, uh, August, September. That's usually still rainy season. And uh, if you do that, I recommend packing a poncho and that's exactly what we did. We bought some ponchos, pretty cheap, 40,000 dons. And that's like three and a half dollars, uh, just in case. The rain doesn't last long, but it is heavy. It's um, basically a tropical type of rain. So just, you can either try to find a place to hide out and avoid it or uh, wear some ponchos and ride it out. Now, if you're riding the hot seasons, I would definitely recommend to bring synthetics over cotton because you'll be sweating. You'll be drenched in sweat. So you might as well have a synthetic that dries much faster than cotton. If you're not liking the sun and you want to be away from it and without a sunburn or anything like that, you could bring a light windbreaker to act as a sunblock. And finally, I noticed that people aren't really worried about full gear here uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you won't be really riding a big motorcycle. That's, those are hard to find here, mostly scooters, and their speeds are 40 to 60. So it's not a fast type of speed like North America. I would bring some light gloves uh, just to protect your hands and especially if you want that sunblock effect. So that would be nice to pack. So my final tip here, number 10, is around parking. Parking is usually pretty easy. You can usually pull right up into the sidewalk. You'll see that with the locals all the time. Uh, sometimes if you're patronizing a shop, they'll have a dedicated parking spot for you while you go in. So ask for that. And sometimes there would be parking and it's usually around like 5,000 to 15,000 dollars in Vietnam Dong for parking. So find that. If you're requiring to park overnight, those lots are probably harder to find, especially because you're not local. But I would ask a local and just say, hey, I need to park overnight. And then they'll point you to the right lots. Okay, so I hope that helps you. These are 10 really good tips that I learned uh, from my time of riding in uh, all over Vietnam. But uh, I hope those will help you in your trip. And if you have additional tips that you've learned on your way there, leave us a comment. Help out the others that's watching this video. Otherwise, make sure you like and subscribe to support my channel and I'll see you in the next video.